business questions, uh, not like uh, things like uh, like uh, uh, a good equation where you have a, a strict outcome. So things are not just true or false uh, in business. So it's hard to know even uh, years later whether a decision was actually good or there would be a better solution. So as you can uh, hear, my uh, English is not my um, first language. So I need a bit of help to identify what leadership is. And uh, I think in Oxford we can trust, so I copied uh, uh, the Oxford Dictionary's uh, definition of leadership. And let's see what kind of definitions they give us. So for example, leadership is the action of leading a group of people or an organization or the ability to do this or the state or position of being a leader or leaders of an organization, country, ETC. So it, these, are, these are really strict definitions, is it? So it's, they say basically leadership is what leaders do. And let's see what, uh, what, what is a leader then. So leader, the, the best definition I like, uh, the, the principal first violinist in an orchestra. There's, a, there's another definition which slightly a bit closer to, to what we think a, a leader really is. The person who leads or commands a group, organization or country, but, or an organization or company that is the most advanced or successful in a particular area. But basically what we, uh, what we can see is they say, uh, okay, so leader, leader is uh, who do the leadership. So we are not really getting closer to the, to the definition. And in this country I learned I can't talk about Oxford without mentioning Cambridge. So let's see how people would explain leadership to me in Cambridgeshire. So the set of characteristics uh, that make a good leader. A person or people in charge of an organization. The position or fact of being the leader. So again, they, they reflect back to leadership so, or leader. So leadership is what leaders do and leaders are who do the leadership. So unfortunately you can't see, but this is a really strict definition of uh, the limit function in math. This, this is a good definition. It, it uh, defines the boundaries of a given thing. This, this is not a good definition. To be honest, in my entire life I never heard a good definition of leadership ever. And let's try Google. So what Google say about leadership? If, if you type in, uh, at least uh, uh, yesterday, it was, there were more than uh, 600 million um, results of leadership. The, the fun is, uh, funny part is the, at the bottom. So maybe the Oxford guy should consult with the Labour Party because the Labour leadership has a contest but they still don't know the winner, so they must do know what leadership is. But books are more trusted source, right, uh, than, than just, um, just blogs or, or just, just the internet in general. So at Amazon, if you type leadership, you, you find uh, more than 200,000 different books and audiobooks about leadership. It's 1,000 life would not be enough to, to get through all of this. What about YouTube? There are more than two million videos, and these are just in English. So <laughs> this, is, this is a real problem of, of this, because every organization needs a leader. Many, many high-performing group, uh, like, like special forces, they have a kind of rule, lead or follow or get out. So leadership really matters, and, and what I can advise is, uh, to, to read the uh, biographies of people who achieve something, like military leaders, because military leaders have a, has to be, you know, they, they ask people to, to risk their very own existence, so the purpose they give has to be very good, um, because this is the real challenge, I think, uh, in leadership, to ask someone to do what willingly, what otherwise they wouldn't do. And let me introduce my, my first leader, 
this is my mom, my dear leader, or dearest leader, and I'm sure everyone's um, uh, mom was uh, his or her first leader, and I think she, uh, she rather facilitated uh, to, to you uh, to grow, to, to become uh, who you are, and she provided the resources you need, she mentored you or coached you, uh, but she never exactly told you what to do, how, how you should play with uh, 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 toy cards or, or, or dolls or, or your favorite G.I. Joe. So they rather just supported you and, and pushed a little uh, to what to be uh, um, a good person. And this is my first subordinate. Um, he clearly has his issues. Um, and when we got him, uh, his name is uh, Berti. It's a, it's a Hungarian name for Albert. And when we got this uh, little puppy, uh, he was a very anxious dog. So when we went home, or even in the night, uh, he couldn't really sleep. He was always barking. He was rushing to the door. Uh, he was very hostile with basically everyone, small dogs, large dogs, neighbors, with everyone. And we didn't really understand why. We, we thought, okay, he's a terrier, so, okay, we, we, we can't fix him. But then one day this happened, and, and some of the papers are actually uh, text forms, and I was very, very, very mad uh, at him. And I was shouting, I was very, very loud, I, I chased him uh, across the, the flat, and uh, then guess what happened? This. Finally, he, he was sleeping, uh, uh, um, and, and we couldn't even, even uh, wake him up, so he just ate his dinner, and he fell asleep in, in that very minute. And then I realized this little dog uh, thought he is in charge, because Every time when we went home, he was the first thing, uh, okay, we had to pet him, or um, we usually come from uh, the grocery shop, so uh, we couldn't really move, and so we gave him something, you know, some, some snacks. And for animals, uh, the leaders always eat first, because they have to be strong to, to protect the others. And even when he tried to bite us uh, gently, but, but uh, it was a semi-serious game, um, he, you know, we, we just, okay, how cute you are, and we didn't really treat him seriously. So I guess he thought, hey, I'm biting him, and he, you know, don't care, he, he can't protect himself, so I have to um, care, uh, take care of, of this uh, little family. And I think this is a good example to how big the burden is of a leader. This is a kind of pyramid. I think the, the, the key responsibility is what every leader should do. The first thing, the, the bottom line, is uh, setting a high standard. So I, I, I can just think about my mom uh, again when I got a, a very good grade in math and I went home uh, um, and I told mom I, my, my test was 96%. Uh, uh, and she asked back, and what was the other four? So she was always the you know, half empty. Uh, uh, kind of person when, when it com came to the you know to standards to achievements. So she always she she never really <coughs> wasn't really satisfied uh, unless it was 100 percent. But maybe she wouldn't uh, be that kind of person. And I, and I think this is important for every um, organization. If you ask uh, uh, an Apple employee, for example, or a Google employee, they they have a very intense day or. They, I, I'm certain they, uh, they would uh, say working for Apple was the most intense period in their life. And, and this is a good thing, e even if they feel it was, uh, it was uh, you know, they, they burn out, or, or even if they, they feel it was too much, their leaders pushed them uh, a, a bit further than they would normally achieve. The other thing is what a leader does is setting goals or sets goals. And this is, uh, this is very important because otherwise people don't really know um, 
where you should heading to or, or, or where you at. So how do you know as an employee or even a co-founder or, or, or just a business partner if, if, there's, a, if there's a dilemma or if, if there's a question and there's no strict procedures and in startups there's, there's nothing like that. So, it's, uh, so how do you know what kind of options uh, you have to choose if you don't know where you want to uh, go? And uh, I'm going to talk about a, a person called uh, Jack Welch, and, and he was the kind of uh, genius of, uh, for 20 years on the top of uh, the General Electric. And, and he was the person who first uh, formalized the way or, or set for um, their, or, or his senior managers to, to specify a, at least five years ahead what kind of era or what kind of products they would like to use and reverse engineer back to, to the current state so they can build up a chain of uh, um, events if they push that events or that, that path very strongly they are almost certain they're going to reach it. Another thing is um, communicating the vision and, uh, and many companies think oh they create a, a mission statement and then that's, that's good. They, they write everything into it. It's, it's 10 sentence and they, they talk about how great they are, and how ethical they are, how bold they are and achieve everything and they, 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 they stay pertinent in the tomorrow's world. I think th this is not going to work. So no one can really remember. Anyone works for a large company here? I mean someone over a thousand. And anyone can, can mention a, a mission statement of, of their favorite large uh, company? It's completely pointless. If, if people can't really know uh, why they are doing what they are doing, then they, they won't really put 100% or 110% uh, to achieve it. And the last thing is what is, is very, it, some, sometimes it's part of the debate to take charge if you are, if you are placed in command, if you have to, if you are the person who ultimately have to say yes or no, then make the decision, don't hesitate. It, because your colleagues Probably you, you hire the, them if you are in a, in a startup. So your colleagues will help to, to correct your mistakes. So th there, there was an example. I don't know, B uh, Band of Brothers. Um, have you seen that series? So there was a, there was a part in it when, when they lost. And it didn't really matter if they, at, at a uh, crossroad, they, they go left or right. But uh, the, the leader was, just hesitating and, and uh, it, it didn't really matter because if they are going on the wrong road after one or two miles they realize uh, the, the sun is in the wrong direction so, so they, they can turn. But uh, the, the same in basically or same uh, decision has to be made every single day and even if the leader don't realize or recognize or understand the problem it, it sometimes happens. You know, if your uh, direct colleagues propose two, two solutions. Why would they propose you something what they don't really consider uh, a viable uh, um, way? So just pick one. And also this takes uh, or, or leads to the responsibility. So ultimately technical leaders or CEOs are responsible for basically everything. You will be the person who has to be blamed if something doesn't uh, go well because ultimately you, you pick the people who who will uh, do the job or yourself doing the job and uh, and uh, it's it's really up to you what you achieve so here is uh, Jack Welsh uh, um, he was the CEO of uh, General Electric between uh, 2000 uh, um, sorry 1981 uh, uh, 2001 and uh, let me cheat a little so at that time when he uh, take the uh, steering wheel uh, the company 
whereas ma market capitalization was uh, 12 billion dollars. So it wasn't a small company. And uh, he grew it uh, into uh, 280 billion uh, um, dollars uh, company in, in 20 years. That's, that's a massive increase if you think uh, General Electric was already a major company and a major uh, company doesn't really grow more than some percent per year. And he was quite famous about his, uh, his uh, stubbornness or, yes, and, and, and he was a, a very hard uh, um, person. He, he started to decimate uh, or, or introduce a thing called decimating, uh, uh, decimation in, in, in uh, uh, enterprise companies when the bottom 10% of the employees had to go uh, each year and the top 20% was, was uh, um, promoted or, or um, received uh, bonuses. And uh, Netflix did uh, uh, the same uh, until uh, they've been blamed uh, uh, about this uh, thing because, but anyway, it, it worked for him. And, and he was the kind of uh, role model uh, for 20 years uh, in, in management. He was the number one uh, um, people, uh, a person who, who, uh, who was invited for, for conferences or, or, or he actually founded a, a management institute. So, if, if you uh, uh, realize some similarities with, uh, with uh, real life uh, between this person and, and uh, his similar one, it's just an illusion. So imagine a leader who has uh, a seven done in uh, judo and uh, eight done in uh, Kyukushin Kai Karate. Imagine a leader who, who plays with bears and tame them. And if he's hungry, he doesn't drop in some Pringles, but he, he hunts uh, something for him. And if he missed the last bus, then he just flies home on a uh, glider or uh, uh, a 160 uh, a strategic bomber. And if uh, this leader, let's say your, your team is in crisis, and such person who, who has this kind of physical and mental strength to learn many things, what he probably don't really need to, to achieve his uh, daily job. Would it be helpful to, to have this kind of person uh, on board? Rudy Giuliani, he's, uh, he's uh, two times uh, uh, elected uh, mayor of uh, New York. He said about his uh, uh, similar brother, um, this person decides what he wants to do and does it in half of the day. He makes a decision and he executes it quickly, then everybody reacts. It's, it's very strange to, 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 to hear an appraisal for, for this kind of person from the other side of the planet. Here's another person. Uh, he's, uh, he was uh, the chief evangelist of Apple two times, I think, and he wrote a very a uh, very uh, foundational book, what I guess every startup or small company read uh, in the early 2000s called The uh, Art of the Start. And as I said, he worked uh, um, for Apple and, and he worked directly with uh, Steve Jobs and he has quite a few insights how things worked um, at Apple. And, and uh, in one of his talks he said, experts are clueless. Customers cannot tell you uh, what they need. On the day when you hear Apple listens to focus groups to decide on their future product, that's the date to short Apple stock. It's a very different approach what you normally hear about uh, to, to learn quickly, to, to, to create uh, MVPs, to explore the market, and, uh, and uh, listen to your customers and, and try to invite them, create uh, uh, um, design sprints, run user interviews, focus groups, etc. It's, it's a very different approach. It's, it says basically this person decided something where he wants to live, uh, let's say 10 years later, and this person executes in a way uh, to, to make it happen. This person is uh, uh, a four-star general, basically that's the highest rank, rank in, uh, in the 
uh, US Army. And, and he was in charge for the Joint Special Operation Command, uh, which, uh, which forms uh, many battalions, including the Delta, the SEAL Team 6, um, uh, the, um, the Ranger Regiment, and, and uh, some, some other troops. So he does know how to build and command very special people. And he said, if you take the top two leaders of the top performing battalion and switch them with the top two leaders of the worst battalion, within 90 days, the worst became the best and vice versa. So he thinks leadership matters that much, regardless what kind of people you have. If you are really good, then you can uh, make them a great people in your team. But there's another archetype uh, of, of leaders, and they are the experimenters. And this lady is uh, Ellen Langer. Uh, she's, a, um, um, she's a senior lecturer at uh, Harvard Business School. And she say the complete opposite. The biggest mistake a leader can make is being certain. Things are constantly changing. Things are unpredictable. What you want is a leader who can exploit the power in uncertainty. And basically, what she says, it doesn't matter what, what you think in the future, there's always something going to happen, what you have to adopt and, and, and exploit uh, that thing. And Steve Lang, if, if you uh, read the Lean Startup or, or the Lean Enterprise books, uh, you probably met with his name. And he, he uh, basically invented the minimum viable product as a, as a definition. And what he says, your initial hypotheses are more than likely wrong, then that's going to be okay. You have to get out uh, the building to interact with customers as soon as possible, to, to learn as quickly as possible. So these are very, very different approaches from very successful people. So there's no, I don't think there's only one way to, to achieve things, and, and, but you have, to be, you have to really pick one or the other to, to, to be successful. And in a classic company, uh, company we, we do know there are, there are, um, there are departments uh, in, in some larger ones where only one type of people work together. And some larger company evolved to be a bit more agile and they created some, some, uh, uh, some teams with, uh, with cross-functional um, knowledge. So they, they behave like a, a self-contained team and they probably run some uh, agile uh, practice. But there's a new kind of breed of, uh, of uh, company structure which is more flat than the other. And this means Basically, one person has a, a kind of home port uh, um, when, where they belong to, but they can contribute to multiple teams. So it's the classic uh, project management where you create a budget for that person and you probably sell to the client or, or when you create a product, you can, you can um, create um, a kind of estimate how much a given feature or bug fix or or uh, an, an epic uh, cost. But in, in this kind of way, you can't do it. And, and uh, this is a more efficient way because sometimes a given person is the best person to solve a given problem. And why not, or why you wouldn't let uh, to other projects to, to use this person? And here's an interesting thing because this is all about diversity. Because these people have very different background, very different knowledge, and they, they can solve very different problems easily. And when I work for, um, sorry, when, when I joined to the company I'm currently working on, is uh, I was the first technical uh, hire, and I noticed how hard it is to um, how hard is it to, to hire someone to, to a startup? I, I think it's, it's 
quite similar to, to, to hire someone to, to an army because working for a startup is it's much different than working for a large enterprise. The, you, especially in London, you can't really compete with mega corporations or financial institutions, uh, salary in salary or in work-life balance or in perks. So you have to give something or provide something but still interesting to these people. And I think this, this thing is, is the impact the person can make. But it's really hard to find uh, people who, who are not that, who, who, who can push the, 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 the uh, salary or the earnings a bit behind uh, the impact. And for, it's, so when you start to hire, you have to consider alternative options. And it, it was all, I always wondered why uh, ladies or girls uh, never ever applied uh, to, to our job. And I started to do a bit, a bit of a background check. Why, why is this happening? And I noticed the, uh, a year study when, when uh, the researchers, they created uh, identical applications and, and they all, all they did is they just replaced the name. So they gave like uh, Joe Bloggs and Jane Bloggs and they sent it to the same department or, or, or with a slight adjustments to, to, to another department. And what they realized, um, seven, uh, if, if uh, the application had, uh, uh, had a, uh, a, a male name, then almost 70% of the applicants uh, were invited to an interview. But if they replaced it to, to, to Jane, it was just free. And it did, did happen even if uh, uh, the interviewer was a, was a female. So it's, it's quite disappointing. Why is this happening? And they realize that this is not a conscious thing. They just decided in, in this way without any intention. And this was a university. So we can imagine if this would be a, I don't know, a, 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 um, an industry or company, it, the, the bias would be even stronger. And there was another very disappointing uh, study. Uh, in 2008 um, at uh, the Harvard, uh, they created a study um, where they surveyed uh, women who, who, um, who graduated as an engineer. And they realized 41% uh, of, um, of the ladies left the um, science or engineering field. 41%. So try to imagine if we could attract these uh, ladies. So not, not in that way. But these studies uh, also told, uh, um, you know, boys will be boys. And, and we always will have a bias. So we have, to, we have to just accept it. But these studies also provided some very, very great advice. How can you get rid of this? And one is to formalize the hiring process. Let's say if somebody has a bachelor degree, give her three points. Master degree, five points. Work experience, two years, one point, whatever. So you have a very objective way to, 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 to measure the candidate. And, and this is great because you can automate this uh, kind of hiring. And, and for example, the startup I'm working on does this basically, to, to provide an unbiased way to, to, to recommend candidates for you. And another one is, it's not a, a commipinko saying, it's a, a transparent uh, salary calculation. There are companies who, who does this in a, on an extreme level. For example, uh, have you ever heard about Buffer? It's, it's a marketing company and what they do is basically all their expense, all their salaries are public, not just internally, but externally. So you can go to their website and check, um, um, you know, uh, X, Y, how much did he earn, how much equity he has, and what's the formula they created to, to make this compensation. And why they are doing this is because it's, it's a very, very frustrate, it's, it's, a, it's very, very, bad thing to bargain 
uh, for your salary because you didn't hire those people because they're bargaining skills. So at the end, giving someone a salary just because, or, or a blessed salary just because he wasn't that aggressive uh, and didn't hit the table that much, it's quite unfair. And, you know, empl uh, employees always talk uh, at Christmas parties after some pint. Everybody will know how much uh, uh, um, uh, the other one earns. And what they're going to feel if the difference is that huge or, or unfair. So they will feel they are either robbed or they are idiot or both. So it's, and, and they're going to leave the company. And why would you risk this? And, and also, you can eliminate the thing to, to oh, uh, please give me a pay rise. I need this because of this or that. No, man, we have a rules. And, and uh, this is if you achieve this or we achieve it as a team, or after X years of uh, seniority working on a given product or whatever formula you create, doesn't matter what exactly, uh, until your employees accept it, you know, you have a rule. You don't, ha don't have to put yourself or any employees to stress and you can, you can eliminate the gossip. It, this doesn't mean you, you can't um, provide some compensation for, for extreme uh, performance or, or some, some if, if someone exceeded uh, what uh, his job was. So you can still give equity or you can still create formulas to, to okay, if, if the team delivers early than the deadline, then everybody gets, you know, 5% plus or 100 or pounds or, or two uh, cinema tickets or whatever. So these are great things and, and ladies are very bad in bargaining. Most of the studies showed they didn't get a pay rise because they never asked. And with this kind of method, they didn't have, nobody has to ask a pay rise. And if we are talking about ladies, they are not the only part of the diversity, or not just the minorities, but there are psychological or personality, uh, uh, not even minorities, because I, I, don't, I didn't find studies uh, for UK or for Europe, but in the US, the, um, the, the, the ratio between extroverts and introverts are basically 50-50. And what is an extrovert? Uh, in the past, uh, I, I saw some, some, some uh, models or, or when employers uh, um, asked us, Basically, they put an, an equal sign between extrovert and leader. Extrovert people are more social. They, they gain uh, energy uh, uh, in, uh, or from the socialization. So they try to make contact. They, 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 even if they, they have no direct intention, they, they, they just do it because, because this is how they recharge. On the other hand, the introverts are, are more the people who just try to be Quiet, or they only say something if they, if they, if there's something uh, they have to say, and and sometimes uh, people will get confused. They they feel these people are shy or or asocial, but no, they just like to be quiet. And there are many powerful people uh, who who are considered themselves as an introvert person. And uh, the lady is actually a freedom fighter. Um, so it's, it's not just about I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sitting at the corner and I don't talk to anyone. No, uh, these people are, are, are just quiet persons. And why would you exclude half of the population with things like open plan office when there are, let's say, hundreds of people in one room, including sales, including developers, including uh, uh, everyone else, marketeers? It's, it's a nonsense. Um, and there are cultures or countries which are more, um, where, where the introverts are, are more uh, represented in, in, in the business. And for example, in Hungary, after the communism, um, um, a businessman bought back their, their old factory. And that businessman was uh, uh, quite successful in the uh, spirits industry, like, like uh, uh, whiskies and, and the brandies, and uh, their old factory is, is actually a, a, a kind of thing. They, they created, a, 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 like if you know Beherovka or, or Jägermeister kind of drink, and the first thing what he 
because their uh, factory wasn't really ready to restart their production, they rented uh, a big office with, with, uh, with uh, his own team. And what he realized, that the, the efficiency, what he got used to, it, it's, it's massively dropped. And the problem was, because these people didn't get used to the big open office. They got used to three people sit in, in a room with door and, 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 and proper um, uh, isolation. So what he did, actually, he kept the, the walls uh, in the old factory and, and, and they are one of the most prosperous uh, factory in, in the country. And this is a startup. This is a Canadian startup called Shopify. And they started uh, with an open uh, office, but then they experimented with uh, this kind of uh, um, light wo uh, walls, and, and they added some, some uh, uh, soundproof uh, uh, coating. So basically, every small team has this kind of small room, and they realized that the, the efficiency uh, was significantly higher than uh, with teams or between teams who still worked in the open, of, uh, open plan office. And this lady, Susan Cain, uh, she, she wrote a book about this problem. And I really recommend it. It's, it's quite fascinating how she, uh, or how, how many interviews she made with uh, uh, Chinese American students or business people and, uh, and, uh, and different uh, uh, kind of ethnicities. And, 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 and she tried to create a, a model or, or recommendation for employers how to treat these people. And, we hear all the time uh, in startups, um, you know, about cultural fit, and I, I strictly feel uh, you as a leader should really not pick um, the very same people. Because, for example, um, the startup I'm, I'm working on, the founder is is a lady, and she has a very very different approach to solve things. I I, I just realized that. Uh, we men, uh, we tend to do something against something, like against cancer, against Microsoft, against copyrights, whatever. But ladies tend to create something to support uh, uh, um, things. And, and uh, our founder created the company to support um, uh, young kids like uh, her little si sister who didn't find an internship. And if I would create a company, for young people to find job, it would be probably against recruiters. And let's talk about quickly about money, because money really defines what you can achieve, especially in startups, which, because startups are just a temporary form of, of a company, uh, which is specialized for hyper growth or this kind of hockey stick uh, growth, where you, you if, if you don't uh, uh, grow 10 percent month by month, uh, that's, that's a bad thing, because the whole, um, whole money is sacrificed to, to, to show up traction. And if I would like to um, uh, compare US and, and Europe, or especially uh, the UK, I think UK has a very, very great place to, to start a business, because there are loads of tax uh, uh, incentives where, where investors, personal uh, investors, can invest in a company and get a, a, a huge tax return. So imagine if you uh, give 100 pounds, you, you can claim uh, uh, 50 pounds back if you put your money in a seed EIS uh, company. EIS uh, stands for uh, Enterprise uh, uh, Investment Scheme. And uh, you, you can uh, raise fund until uh, 150,000 pounds uh, in CD, uh, seed EIS and for EIS uh, uh, 5 million pounds per year. And that's a, that gives plenty of runway for any company to, to take off. And, and, and uh, I didn't mention other funds like, like the Innovate UK Smart Fund, where you can, uh, where they fund um, high risky, uh, sorry, high risk uh, uh, projects. And, and the R&D tax credit. These are not default in uh, every country. So if you uh, do this in, in uh, California, you, you, you don't have this CDIS thing. So the, um, the Kaufman Foundation, which is a, um, um, a kind of institution to, 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 to uh, create studies for, for um, 
uh, or about uh, entrepreneurship. They, they have a study when they state uh, uh, at least uh, $30,000 is needed to, to start a company and 80% of the people actually get this funding from their family. So in the UK you don't really have to do this and, and these numbers are quite generous. And, but let me show you another uh, number. These are, these are the funding uh, uh, what VCs, venture capitalists, uh, put to uh, uh, a company. So you can see uh, roughly 9 billion uh, US dollars uh, was invested in 2014. And unfortunately, these numbers are, are quite stagnating from 2008. So basically, there's, there's a 20% increase in the last... Uh, um, seven years and this means because more and more company start to to grow more and more company gets this initial funding more company compete uh, for these uh, rounds and if you see the the amount of uh, um, uh, rounds they are constantly increasing and and this this number includes all the um, all the investments so basically in all across Europe, there were 1,500 uh, companies who received over a million kind of funding. And in the US, uh, there are almost uh, 4,000 who received this uh, money. And uh, basically, the amount, uh, what the, the totally invested is, is five times <coughs> comparing to Europe. So basically, uh, roughly uh, uh, 9.5 uh, billion dollars was invested uh, in companies and UK got 2.7 billion only. But the reason is uh, the, the UK investments are, are very conservative. They, they, try, they usually invest in something tangible and, and, and startups are, are really far from it. Especially if we check something like this. Uh, anybody heard about the WhatsApp? application and uh, how it was sold to Facebook. So Facebook basically paid 22 billion dollars uh, to buy that company and here are some uh, other companies just just to see the contrast. So uh, AMD, the, the CPU uh, uh, designer and, and maker company has 1.39 uh, billion dollar uh, in market capitalization. That means all the outstanding shares the, this is the total amount at first. The Fiat Chrysler, uh, who makes uh, not just uh, the Cinquecento, but also the Maseratis and, and Ferraris, they uh, roughly 19 billion of Davis. The Nvidia, uh, 11 and a half. The Porsche uh, is 10.7. And basically, WhatsApp was, you, you could buy two Porsche companies uh, uh, on the price of uh, WhatsApp. So the numbers getting. Uh, lost their meaning really especially if you check if we, if we go back to to this where all Europe had uh, 9.5 billion dollar investment in a year that means with what one WhatsApp you can fund uh, uh, for two years all the European semi-large companies but the the thing is that there's hope because Interestingly, the UK people gained more wealth uh, uh, in 2014 than, uh, than uh, the Silicon Valley people. So this is the uh, wealth increase in household. And 69% of this money is actually coming from uh, s um, stocks. And if we can convince households or, or smaller uh, investors to, to invest in, in, in small companies, then we can go, grow much bigger than, than our Silicon Valley counterparts. And because of the, the uh, EIS scheme, um, this is easy to happen, just we need to figure out a, a strategy for it. And just in one minute, money. Because we, we hear about this kind of move fast um, and break things. So, Companies are, are tend to create a, 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 this kind of ethos to, to, to exploit something quickly. And then they realize, oh, this is working, that we have traction, so then we improve it. But they always pick the, the, the kind of uh, cheapest solution. And let's see just 
on legislation level, what would happen if you, if you use uh, AWS? AWS is a great service. We use it as, uh, uh, as well. But they, for example, they don't have data center in the UK. And these are all the data centers across the world. So what would happen if, uh, if uh, let's say, UK is not that friendly anymore with Ireland? Then what will happen with your company? Or, or if there's a new uh, legislation or you, you, you try to invite a company who say, oh, I, I don't want to host uh, my data to, to, to foreign countries, then what would you do? Or let's say um, in India, a, a minister invites you to, hey, I give you office, I give you everything, but our citizens' data can't be mixed with... Uh, let's say Vietnamese people or with, with uh, people from Africa. Then what you do, what you're going to do? Um, you, can't, you won't say uh, we don't do Windows, right? So you have to keep in mind these kind of legislations. And because uh, my time is up, uh, I would like to just leave you with this. What you as a technical leader has to do is to build trust help others to grow, provide stability, and take charge. Thank you.